Let the water wash away your tears Let the fire burn away your fears Let the wind blow into your life Such faith and trust Oh, let the earth hold you Take care of you Nurture you all The power of love is here now The power of now is here now The power of you me is here to create magic on earth The power of love is here now The power of now is here now The power of you me to create magic on us. Welcome everyone. Welcome to the Freedom Living Summit. It's so sweet to see all your faces here. I love this. <laughs> oh, okay, let's just take a moment to really get settled, drop into our body, relax any nerves or jitters or tension or stress and just bring everything that we possibly can all of our faculties into this present moment thank you all for being here as well um, whether you're here live or on the recording your energy in this space contributes to this space and what we end up discussing what ends up being shared every single one of you and the energy that you're bring, bringing is very valued and contributes to this space. That in mind, we're just going to do a little embodiment, bring our presence into this space, bring our energy into this space, and then we will get started. So let's just take some deep breaths. You can close your eyes or keep them open, and we'll start to roll out the neck. Deep breaths. Don't notice any sounds you can hear around you. Any smells. Sending your awareness out to the space around you. Bringing it back into the space inside you. Bringing some movement into the arms. Wiggling the toes, 
moving the feet and the ankles. Opening up the hips. Just keep moving in whatever way feels good for you. You might want to slow it down. You might want to speed it up. You can shake, you can twist, you can flow. Really let yourself go for it. Move in whatever way your body wants to move. Turn your camera off if that feels more comfortable. This is a little moment for you to check in with you and your body. Deep breaths, start to slow it down. Centering it all in around your spine and your solar plexus, your heart. Grounding down into the root, feeling your feet on the ground. Well, welcome here. I am both excited and also every time I go to say excited, the word powerful comes up instead. It feels like this is a powerful opportunity to connect with each other. And this is something that I've been wanting to do for a long time, but I haven't really known what it was that I wanted to do. I could just feel it coming. And I was talking to Bernadette just before about how all of this came about and I want to share that story with you. So I'm going to share a little bit about how the Freedom Living Summit came to be. The massive journey it's been to get here and land in this moment right now. And then I will introduce Bernadette and share a little bit more about her and our friendship. I know a lot of you know her already, but some won't. So I'll share a little bit about this gorgeous redhead over here. And then we'll get into a conversation and I guess Bernadette's probably, Bernadette's holding the baton of kind of interviewing me, but this is more a conversation than it is. And that's how all of these calls are going to go. It's going to be very conversational. And I really just want to give you all the opportunity to be a fly on the wall and witness for a women of out of the many who inspire me and empower me and have been really, really incredible friends over the last year, like really freaking incredible friends. And that was the intention of this container. And then <laughs> as it started to really form, Bernadette, well, someone needs to interview you. <laughs> You're not getting out of this. I was like, okay, let's start with that. That's a good point. So that's where we are today. So the way that all of this came about, oh, I just want to say as well, we'll be here for an hour to an hour and a half. I've allowed an hour and a half because we'll go an hour and a half max, but we might wrap up a little bit early. We'll see how we go. Okay, so how all of this came about. So I was in LA last year and I had my last name on my Instagram handle and I was living with a friend who was like, I'd probably take that off if I were you. Like, it's a privacy thing. It's whatever. Like, why don't you change it to something just change it to something else, a little bit more like representative of you. And I was like, okay. And the first thing that came up was freedom living. And I just, I didn't really care in a sense what it was at the time. I was like, I'll just change it. So my last name's not on here. So I put amy.freedomliving. And I didn't really think much more about it, but I also had this nudge and like in a, it was like this kernel seed inside me that there was something more to this. And there's been so many times that I've looked at that and been like, I don't really know what that means. Like, why did I put that there? And I've kind of thought, do I take it off? Do I change it? And every time I felt like, no, like, you know, it's almost felt like a seed that's been germinating. And every time I look, I'm like, is it a weed? Is it a flower? Is like, is it a tree? Is it going to bear fruit? Like, what? I don't know. Do I pull it out and change it and plant something else? And every time I felt like, no, like, just keep, allow it to be there and also keep being curious about what it is. And an, another reason that I've kept it there is because 
the in the gene keys gene key 55 is this I, there's this idea that like how evolution as humanity and what we're moving through with our consciousness is evolving from the shadow state of victimhood into the gift and the city the highest expression of freedom so that's also been another little thing where I've like I've wanted to keep it there because it's felt resonant with the direction that we're moving collectively in terms of our consciousness and for me like there's nothing wrong with fanning the flame of freedom in myself and in others so I've kept it there and I've just kept kind of I don't know like being just listening to that little internal nudge that's like just keep it there so I have and then I've also got a background in journalism that's what I studied at university and I left halfway through to travel the world because I couldn't do the uni thing but this like journalistic thing inside of me of like wanting to share stories wanting to bring together stories and communicate through storytelling and also communicate messages in a in a clever and meaningful and also emotionally connected way so that's been there as well and the way that this has all come about it's almost feels like multiple worlds crashing together and having listened to a lot of podcasts and been around that world I've also really been feeling over the last year like the everyday women in my life like the women who don't have these massive platforms and followings and podcasts and whatever like they have just as much value to share in a way if not more because of the relatability because of the fact that they are living their lives like the rest of us and I'm not meaning to like hierarchy or pedestal anyone but there's this sense of like everyday woman like the mothers in my lives, the women who are like, yeah, I'm not like running a podcast and doing this and doing that. I'm getting my kids up to school and I'm cleaning up shit on the carpet and I'm wiping vomit off myself and I'm taking care of myself and I'm being conscious about how I communicate with my partner and my kids and myself or it, mothers or not. I feel like the mothers have been, I think that's what's really like highlighted to me. Like these women have so much to share and I want to create a space where our everyday stories and the way that we navigate our everyday lives are inspiring each other. And like, those are the stories that are also added to the mix of the incredible podcast and the incredible, uh, like professional, articulate, scientific, um, whatever, like there's that as well. And I want to add to the mix voices of my friends who have inspired me and empowered me and have a lot of wisdom and value to share and I'd listen to their podcasts and I'm like I need to like like I need to share this like I can't be the only one just listening to these and there's a handful of you here in this call right now I'm like okay well if we do another one of these you're next <laughs> because it's certainly not just the collection of like the five of us right now I've got so many women in my life that I I mean all of you we all have something valuable to share and I think that's the top and bottom of it is like we all have something valuable to share so let's have conversations, share that with each other and receive those little insights and nudges from each other. And also when we witness each other, there's this, there's such a powerful energy to witnessing. And this is where I want to be Bernadette because as I've had this little seed of freedom living growing in me, I've also had this relationship budding and growing with Bernadette. And <laughs> we just, I don't know, it was like, our worlds collided and for a while there we were like this doesn't really make sense I don't know why and how and what's going on here but there's a energetic resonance between us and we also looked at astrology charts and we we're like holy shit there is a lot here we have the same rising sign a lot's going on in the same houses and we have a lot of placements in the same spot we're like okay that makes a little bit of sense we've we get each other in a way because well, we get, we get each other because the parts of me reflect parts of you that are the same, but then there's also some differences. And so we can like, we're reflecting each other and in the witnessing of each other, we've been able to start to like witness ourselves in the reflection. <laughs> I think Bernadette at one point said to me, she was like, it's really interesting witnessing you witness me. <laughs> and that's like the dynamic. It's like, I'm, I'm witnessing you, you're witnessing me but I get to witness myself in the experience of being witnessed by someone else. Like I'm seeing this mirror back to myself. And that's another part of this container in this summit is like, I want us all 
to have the opportunity to really witness ourselves as we're witnessing each other. So what's being brought up internally, like when someone shares something and you're witnessing and you're giving your full presence to a story or a conversation that's being shared, see if you can also have the observer perspective of what's coming up in you and the little parts of you that feel in resonance with what, a little bit of a contraction or a trigger around what's being shared because there's holy shit like there's so much medicine in that there's a connectedness and like a togetherness in it and there's also an opportunity for really personal deep self-reflection so throughout this week Bernadette's also going to be sharing with us some integration materials to support that in particular like as we move through the internal stuff that's coming up as well as witnessing the conversations there'll be some integration materials along the way to support that process so Bernadette ah. <laughs> Hi, do <laughs> you want to interview me? <laughs> Have you got anything else to share or add around how this containers uh, come about? Because you've had a very inside, you've had an yeah. inside scoop. Well, I just, when you were talking about like the witnessing self through witnessing else, and it's like, I know you and I have had this conversation a lot around, okay, I know who I am. Right. I, I, or I, I have a self image of who I believe myself to be. And then here comes along someone that sees you in a light that you're not able to see yourself. And so now there's this expansion point of really. And so in that moment, I think at least what I'm gathering when you say this, like it's in that moment where you now simultaneously are holding the self version that you've seen yourself as, and now a possibility of a new, not a new version, but a new expansion point of being simultaneously. And now you get to somehow marry those two together, um, which is just all really very expansive. And I feel like that's kind of been the nugget of the whole witnessing piece that we've talked about. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, there's been so many times I can recall where I've said to you, like, I've, I hadn't even thought to say it for months, but it's just something I observe about you. And I know, like, this is just, to me, this is just how you operate in the world. And this is just how I see you. And then eventually, I'll say it out loud. And your response has been like, really? I'm like, what do you mean, really? Yes, of course. Like, this is, it's so clear to me, like, this is how I see and feel and experience you. And it's like you said, it's not a new version of yourself because it's already there. It's already something that's been happening and I've been observing it. Now I've just said it out loud. I've been like, yeah, like this is absolutely how you operate. What do you mean? Yeah. And you're like, well, yeah. I get, and it's like, there's a, the expansion to me feels like an opportunity to embody. We've been talking about embodiment a lot with this as well, like in the lead up to this summit. And that's a big thing for me personally and in what freedom means to me, it's, the embodiment piece is massive I'm also a Leo and the self-expression and like here to shine my authentic light and I notice that and I feel it and I can feel for you Bernadette like when I've reflected something to you and you're like really I'm like yes it feels like you then start to embody it like it was already there it was already happening but you weren't I don't know consciously aware that you were that was a facet of you and then it's like you start to like own it, an embodiment, like your fiery side has been a big part of that. And also your authority and the thing like you've invested so much time and energy and intentionality, like time and energy with deep intentionality into space holding, into holding medicine, into medicine in the sense of like, substances and not substances like medicine in general like what is the medicine in this space and very intentionally like placing your words and communicating and I think as I've reflected back to you how well you do that it feels like you've almost like come into yourself and doing that and embodying that and then it just comes online even more full for, full force and I feel like that's the case with the relationship that I have and I know you have as well with everyone who's going to be having conversations in this container like that's the dynamic that we have with each other to varying degrees and it looks different between all of us because we're all different humans with different ways of seeing each other but 
It's like if I can share one angle of you and how I see you and then someone else can share one angle and someone else can share one angle, then it both expands our own view of ourselves and it also expands, like I was saying before we jumped on the call, we are chatting. It also, it opens up like this experience of like, oh, wait a minute. Okay, so if I see things like this and I, like you don't see things like that, like this is just a me thing, well, then how do you see things? Like, how do you experience that? So there's then a curiosity of like, well, like I want to know how you experience that thing. I want to know how you see that or feel that. And then there's just, I don't know, there's, it's more expansion. Pretty wild. It feels like the flying through space, like the speed that we're actually flying through space on the planet right now. That's what it feels like to me. It's like, and just keeps expanding. And it's big and deep and it's also a lot of fun. And yeah, I also feel like our relationship's been very grounded and playful and very spiritual and real and practical. Yeah. Um, I mean, I just want to like kind of close up that thought. Like that is that's, that is the power of these kinds of stories, right? Like you, you pretty much have just brought a new perspective aside from, ooh, how can I recognize myself in that story, but rather what how where is that in me in a way that I've never really considered you know like yes there's some stories that are going to resonate because like there's similarities or there's just very similar journeys but then there's it's like inspiration I'm inspired well why am I inspired what is that actually unlodging in me that wants to come online Right. Um, and that's, I just think part of the, the beautiful power of storytelling, which was why I know you felt really passionate about wanting to put something like this together. Cause we're always amazed by all the unbelievable women in our life. And we're like, talk to so-and-so and oh my gosh, you won't believe what she told me. You know, it's just like, it's so incredible. So thank you for putting this together. And I just want to say like, it's just so wonderful to see all the faces and yeah feel it finally here in form. We've been talking about this for a really long time. And it feels yeah. precious because it's like we're you're breathing life into a formless thing. And it's the women that say yes, that are actually bringing it to life with their presence. So yeah. yeah. Thanks ladies. Exactly. Okay. So should we get on with it? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> I just had a moment of thought for the recording. Yeah. Should we pin the two of us? I gave you the host role. Well, I don't know. I, want to do that. I think you can pin us both for the recording so that when people watch it back, we both stay on the screen rather than flipping between the speaker. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. If not, it's not a big deal. Let's see. I'm going to pin you. Yeah, okay. It's easier for anyone with phones. That's good to know. What'd you say? And Emily said it's easier for people with phones as well. If we when it's, it. Yeah. Or when it so goes I back think, and forth. Oh, wait, I can do it. Here we go. Place pin. Sorry, babes. Well, I've pinned you. Can you pin me? I thought I did pin you. If you go to the participants and then on the side, there's three dots and you should be able to I could pin you, but I can't pin myself for whatever reason. I thought I pinned you. Did it? Oh, maybe it just pinned you on my screen. You know what? You I can only pin you. one. What is going on with Zoom today? Um, Anyone got any tips? Feel free to share it in the chat. Let's see. You just pin yourself, Manny. Oh, okay. Are you all, all right? I'm not seeing that on my end, babe. So I've just pinned me. That's what we should do. Well, I want you to be pinned too. Right, but I'm not sure where to do that. And I don't know that now is the time to figure it out. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I do. Um, I'm just I'm just wondering if everyone can see, like if you pin yourself, if everyone can see us two pinned, or is it just me pinned? There. How's that? No. I need some feedback. Don't know. On my end. Amy's already pinned. 
replace pin. Okay, I'm giving this like one more minute. And then... Yeah, sure, 60 seconds, uh, we're on the clock. Okay. Just say, I want to be mindful of everyone's time. It's uh... fine. <laughs> no, it's fine, I'll unpin myself and then it'll go back and forth between um, the speaker of you. Okay. I'm just thinking for the recording. It's fine. Okay, no. Next time. Next time. <laughs> Next time. We got it. Live feedback. Okay. Okay, um, cool. Great. So shall we? Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Can't wait. So as we discussed when we first chit chatted before this call, we're gonna go, go ahead and start off with a really uh, cliche but important question. You know, we're, we have this summit based on the frequency and this idea of freedom. And I would really love for you to share a little bit more in depth of like, what does freedom actually mean to you? It's feels like more than anything, it's a feeling it's not. And this is something that I have been realizing more and more, especially over the last couple of months. It's not something external to me. Freedom is an internal thing and it's not predicated on anything like outside of myself. It is literally, it's a feeling inside of me, a feeling free to like live life moment to moment, to be present, to be embodied, to be in my body so that I can make sovereign and autonomous choices like moment to moment. And I was also thinking about this this morning. I told you I was thinking about like, for me, I was wondering to myself, I was like, if I'm asked the question, what does embodiment mean to me? How would I describe that? Because it's something that's so in my body, it's a little difficult to put words to. But in that question, I was asking myself, like embodiment is a massive part of, well, it feels like for me, freedom is all about embodiment. When I feel embodied, when I feel present in my body and I'm aware, like through my body, not just through my mind, but my body has awareness. It feels like I have all of my faculties online or as many as I have access to this current point in my awareness and my journey and my stage of evolution to make sovereign decisions and choices. And it's also not like there's a hyper vigilance that can be like super aware and it's not that like I, I that doesn't feel free that feels like there's a constriction and I'm actually hyper aware even through my body out of a place of fear or avoidance or protection like keeping myself safe so it feels like what freedom means to me is a feeling and now I need to describe the feeling because it's not something logical but it feels like this relaxed easeful present aware state in my body that is surrendered to the moment and is also conscious to respond to the moment in the way that I choose in that moment. Does that answer the question? I don't know, does it? Uh, <laughs> any further questions? Final answer? Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to put all this stuff into words, but it's good. It's a good practice to articulate it. I mean, because that's just a question, right? Seeming. Yeah. But we're talking about, like you said, it's not just it's not just a feeling. There's an embodiment piece to it. There's a frequency piece to it. There's a lived experience of it. There's an actual like inter there's a relationship with it, is what yep. I'm hearing you say. That yeah. um you action with and from. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, what makes it really difficult to kind of pin down. And so I would just yeah. love to hear, like, share. I know I find your story so powerful, just having had the privilege to have you crash course into my life. Um, I've, you know, I've been very privileged to hear the stories and to not only that, have a front seat watching you grow and expand um, like a proud mama bear, big sister. Um, and so this whole like relationship with freedom, like I would love for you to really tune in and feel like what on your journey, I would even say specifically this past year, 
you know, because you had mentioned, like, this is when this Freedom Living thing kind of came up. And this year, last year, like, how have you been living with freedom from that place of, like, actioning with it and from it and excavating where it lives within you? <laughs> what direction to go? <laughs> I know, right? Because, I mean, yeah. like, again, I just... I feel like you've really fast tracked in a lot of ways that is incredibly valuable to people that would be um, a, to the point we were saying, like to the people that don't even know that that's a possible possibility. And to those who are already kind of on this journey and being like, Oh, there's the one obstacle that I didn't realize that was kind of in the way. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense. Yeah. Kind of. I think like I don't know what's coming up is well I guess like a little backstory of like internal me before the past year I have always been super autonomous pretty switched on I was talking to my mum the other day we we're talking about this I was like when did that start and she was like I'll tell you like when you were two years old I grew up on a strawberry farm. My parents separated when I was five, but before they separated, my mom and dad ran a strawberry farm and they had to get up really early to pick the strawberries because they bruise less when it's cold. So I was two, my brother was six months old and my mom and dad would go down to the strawberry farm 150 meters down from the house to pick strawberries. And I don't remember this because I was two, but everyone, my grandma's told me for years, my mom reminded me the other day, I would be I'd be awake I'd wake up and I would be taking care of my little brother and my attention and almost like role that I took on like I wasn't waking up screaming for my mom and dad I would wake up I was fine I'm good I'm good <laughs> what about this little six-month-old baby like I'm gonna take care of him and mom said as soon as I could climb on the bench and make toast I was climbing up on the bench and making myself breakfast so I've always been super autonomous and I would, especially with my little brother, like this motherly role of like, mom, don't let him get away with that. Like, don't be like, pull him up on this. And it's been difficult for me and my mom in our relationship because she she said to me the other day, she was like, she, she was kind of um, retelling it to me. And she was like, you know, you do this. And I'd be like, ah, like, can you just let me figure it out as a mother? And I can see where that was like really difficult for her. It was obviously really difficult for me as well. Cause as a child, I was like, but like, will someone listen to me? Like, yes, I'm looking through my little two-year-old, five-year-old, 10-year-old lens. But like, I was aware even at that age, like I know some stuff, like I, I have some valuable things to share and add to this conversation and decision-making process. And I'd like for it to be taken seriously. Like that's always been there and been a part of, me and my navigating system however <laughs> it feels like up until the last year I was thinking about this this morning like there was some serious stories running around how I perceived my reality and my experience that were not in alignment with like what the reality and the experience actually was and it feels like like I made this kind of breaking point decision a year and a half ago. I was like, I'm going to the States. I was in partnership. I was like, I'm going on my own. I'm going on this journey. And I pretty much spent the whole, until like six months ago, I got home. I spent the whole year traveling. I went to Norway. I lived on a family property that's been in the family for six generations, hundreds of years of history and energy and like my family living in that home. I was there on my own and a whole host of other things. That was a massive part of it. But like over that last year, it feels like from the breaking point decision of like, I need to go and do this on my own. And that's an internal decision that doesn't, it's not like that can externally look like anything, but internally I was like, I need to take ownership for what I'm experiencing, for like what's going on in here. Because I was starting to wake up to the stories and realize like, I have viewed my life as though it's X, Y, Z and my experience as though it's X, Y, Z. But as I started to move, like do embodiment practices and actually like 
move and dance and feel into my body and not dance in a way that was like structured or looked good, but like really just move my body and feel my body and move emotions through my body and not have to logically like work out what's going on, but allow it to move through my body. feels like that was the thing that first cracked open what's actually happening in my body, which then brought more awareness to the disconnect between my lived experience and my stories of what I was perceiving my lived experience was. And then in that, there's obviously like a holy fuck moment of like, well, hang on a minute. Like, well, what the fuck do I do with all of this? Because if I thought that it's all sunshine and rainbows and now I'm realizing like, well, that doesn't feel like that. And that doesn't feel like that. And that fucking certainly doesn't feel like that. Like, what do I do with all of that? And so that was that breaking point moment of like, I don't know what to do with that, but I need to, take responsibility like I'm there's no one else is responsible for that like what do I need to do okay in this moment feels like I need to get on a plane and go to the states and then in this moment it feels like instead of going back to Australia I need to get on a plane and go to Norway and spend some time on my family property and from there all right I feel like I need to go here and I need to go here so the last year has been like really building that trust with myself of when I have those little nudges initially it's either terrifying or I just dismiss it and thankfully they hang around long enough for me to really start to pay attention and be like no this keeps coming up keeps coming up like the freedom living thing it's like nah like the feeling of like no it just it feels right to just keep it there or it feels like right to just just keep moving in this direction and then as I've done that and seen how aligned that decision was it's built trust to continue to follow that internal navigation system even more because it's always been there and I think that's the full circle thing that I'm realizing now like it's always been there but I don't know the stories were there as well and it feels like and I'm sure there's still like I'm still it's not like they're all gone like I'm sure there's still stories playing out right now that I'm not aware of and I'll continue to become aware of them but now it feels easier and easier maybe not easier um there's less of a panic when I realize like, oh, I have been perceiving something as this, but it doesn't feel like that. So how can I like bring those two together and listen to my body and my body's operating system? It doesn't feel like as massive and like earth shattering anymore. It did at one point, but now it's just like, okay, well, this is, this is part of the process. It's always going to be here. And awesome, I found another area where I can come into more alignment and integrity and embody who I am truly here to be as opposed to operating out of stories and in like playing into systems and structures that don't actually resonate with the truth of who I am. I want to, you mentioned the word ownership. Mm -hmm. And like the importance of that in this cycle, right? So it's like, what I'm hearing you say is starting with embodiment that brought like the awareness of the stories and the awareness of the reality and the truth of your life. And even yeah. more so that like, that was your responsibility. Every decision you had made up to that point was the physical manifestation of your life in that moment. And there was a choice point to take ownership. And I'm just curious, can you speak a little bit into that of like, what does, what does that mean exactly? What did that look like for you without mm. specifics? You know what I mean? But like to really yeah. get into the process of ownership, because I feel like this is a word that's actually thrown out a lot, much like a lot of other words, but this specifically, we hear a lot, take ownership of your life, take ownership of your yeah. life. And like, so bridging that, the understanding of what it is to like, look at your life because there is a point where you not just look at your life and be like, yeah, this is accumulation of all my choices, but it there, it lands in your body in a way where you're like, oh, hmm. I actually created this life. <laughs> yeah. And when you have that breaking point, specifically when like, maybe it doesn't resonate or it no longer aligns in certain things, you do have this place, you have this responsibility now to like, what are you going to do about it? Yeah. And yeah. So I'm curious, like what, what was that like ownership journey like, like for you? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny because like I said, it was it's always been there in a way. There's been this sense within me of like, well, I'm good, but I need to take care of my little brother or I need to right. take care of someone else. But the story that was, it doesn't even feel like a story. I don't know, it is in a way, but almost like the the pattern that that ingrained in me was that, well, yeah, the pat, there was a pattern that was ingrained and then a story that kind of matches the pattern. And the pattern ingrained was that I'm independent, I take responsibility for myself and people around me and I'm a child checking, like, is everyone ready because we need to be on time and has my little brother got lunch ready and is, is Ari's shoes on and we're ready for school? Like, that's that's the pattern, I'm doing that. And it was ingraining in me this, like, sense of value and fulfillment and satisfaction that was feeding a part of me that essentially was like, it's outsourcing, it's outsourcing a sense of satisfaction in myself to a role that is happening externally and to the way that people respond to that because not everyone likes to be fixed or supported or mothered. So what do you do when you come up against someone who is like, I'm sorry, hold on a minute. I've got me. I can put my own shoes on. Like that wasn't happening around me. So I just got to ingrain this pattern, ingrain the pattern, ingrain the pattern. And then obviously there are moments where there's like this pattern interrupt. This is such a great way to break down like all of these little words that we use. Like what's a pattern? What's a pattern interrupt? What are the stories? Like how does this all practically look? This is like, I'm saying that out loud because I'm like, this is a really good process for me to verbally acknowledge and like consciously acknowledge how all this works anyway so pattern interrupt and I'm like wait a minute how come you're not showing up in the way that satisfies this part of me and you you mentioning like to other people in your life right other people in my life yeah other people in my life and initially it's like it's also I'm taking myself back there because right now it's a very different process but when all this kind of begins and starts churning up like ah fucking furious I'm like you piece of shit you're not responding to me like so angry and blaming and vicious towards someone else because they're not showing up in the way that fits my pattern and provides this sense of satisfaction to me and I became aware of that and like it's such a distinct moment that in a conversation with someone I was like furious upset emotional I was like I can hold myself 99.9% .9 of the time I know I'm responsible for myself I know I can take care of myself 99.9% .9 of the time but the 0.1% that I really need you you abandon me and as I said that out loud I was like oh god <laughs> 99.9% .9 of the time is like not 100% of the time, maybe. Like, and I left that conversation and I went out into a field and picked up a big stick and I just smashed this stick to pieces on a tree and screamed and was like pounding the ground. I was fucking furious of like just all of it. Like, it was like all of that anger and frustration that sometimes like outwardly and openly was being expressed and pointed towards someone but most of the time was like subtly quietly manipulating a situation but it was still the same frequency and it was like I went from that conversation and directed it just out like outside into like nature and a safe space at no one blaming no one and just let it move through my body and like let myself feel how angry I was ultimately that I had been abandoning myself at 0.01% of the time and the story interrupts like that's where the story kind of it didn't match the reality anymore because my story in my mind was I'm independent I'm responsible I can take care of myself and then I literally realize and see in front of me like as I spoke the words out no you don't actually in a subtle but pretty significant way you actually rely on the people around you to satisfy a part of you to feel a sense of value in the world and to feel responsible 
and feeling responsible is a story that makes you feel valued. And that kind of snowball, well, my God, that snowballed into a week of, oh my God, that was like, that I haven't thought about this week for a long time. That was, it was so hard to like, to stay with that realization and to, to not just, okay, cool. I'll put that on the shelf and like, we'll get to that and I'll work on it. Like I didn't do that. I was really confronted in the sense of like, like this is a serious mismatch from the reality that I thought I was living and the way that I thought I took care of myself and operated. And I was committed. Like there was this unrelenting determination and devotion in me of like, I will feel every, I think I just made a commitment to myself of like, I'll feel everything that I need to feel and look at everything that I need to feel and look at in order to have the capacity to hold myself 100% of the time. And the biggest thing that came up in resistance to that, like this terrorized fear inside of me was that if I can hold myself 100% of the time, then that's it. That's it. I will, no one will ever hold space for me ever again. No one will ever satisfy that part of me that there's a connection that happens when there's a nurturing connect, like you're taking care of someone, you're supporting their needs. And obviously like in order for that to be healthy, there needs to be reciprocity. And oftentimes there wasn't reciprocity because I was subconsciously putting this pressure on other people to, I remember the person I had the conversation with said to me, it's like this life or death feeling that if I don't show up for you, like all hell will break loose. And that is what it was because I know, well, I can't hold myself in this area and I am expecting you to be able to do that. So you're going to have to figure it out because I figure it out 99.9% .9 of the time. <laughs> You've only got this 0.1% of the time. I'm sure you can fucking figure it out. <laughs> but it's like such a pressure to put on someone and it's not anyone else's responsibility. And that was the part that I was like, I want to have the capacity and the sovereignty and the autonomy to be able to hold myself 100% of the time. And then when I like broke through that resistance and soothed myself of like, no, that's not what it's going to mean. Like I am going to be able to allow myself to be hold, held, but I'm also going to be able to make a wise and healthy choice around who I allow to hold space for me. Like I, I if I'm 100% able to hold space for myself, I don't need anyone to hold space for me. And that's super empowering because I then actually get to choose the kind of people that I allowed to hold space for me, especially the parts of me that are really tender and vulnerable and like deserve to have conscious, grounded, loving space held and empowering space. Like I don't need anyone to fix me and I don't need to fix anyone else. And if the person in front of me isn't able to hold space for me well then that's okay I can I can remove myself and I can go and give myself what I needed and that was the practice that followed it was like another well lifetime <laughs> still doing it but the main thing was like there were moments where I would realize like this person isn't able to hold space for me right now and this make or break moment of like do I keep pushing and manipulating and like angling the situation to try and like support them to be able to hold space for me? Or do I remove myself and allow them to be in whatever process they need to be in or potentially feel hurt that I haven't continued in the connection or dialogue or whatever? I'm like, I'm gonna take responsibility and ownership of myself in this moment and communicate like, I'm feeling overwhelmed or I can feel anger rising up in me, whatever it is, like, I'm going to go and take myself for a walk. I'll be back when I have, when I'm good, when I've soothed myself, like when I'm ready to come back to this conversation. And that brings safety to the relationship as well. That brings a sense of safety to the other person of like, I'm not going to heat my shit onto you. Like I, I am able to take myself away and, or to someone else, like another person who I know through trust and experience is able to hold space for me, but also taking ownership for myself. I'm not just going to dump it on that person. Like I'm able to ask and communicate. This is where I'm at and have some tact about it and not just like 
crumble over the line. Like that's that's the ownership thing. Like I have ownership over the way that I show up in the world, which also for me feels like that's freedom. Like I'm sovereignly choosing how I show up in relationship, how I take care of myself. And there's a lot of areas that I still like catch myself in stories and patterns, but I'm also getting a lot better at becoming aware of when I'm doing that and a lot gentler with myself and a lot more compassionate with myself when I am doing that to course correct and to tune in with my body, my entire body, not just my mind. Be like, all right, what do I need? What can I take ownership for? What's out of my control? What can I accept? What can I surrender to? What can I put in place? Do I want to pick up that phone call? Do I want to answer the door? Like, that's been the thing lately around my privacy. I've been taking ownership over my privacy and my personal space. And there's been moments of like phone calls or someone coming to the door. I'm like, I don't, I don't actually really want to see anyone right now. I can still answer the door. I can still pick up the phone, but I can be honest about the fact that like I'm in the middle of something or, oh, okay, great, done. We've communicated what we need. Thanks, see you later. And take ownership for my space and my privacy and my safety within myself and I don't, yeah, the sense is like, I don't need anyone else to do anything to provide that for me, but I also get to choose the people who show it up in a way that support me in taking care of myself and feeling safe in the world. It's very liberating. Well, and it's hard sometimes. Like, you're speaking my love language. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I love I love the piece. Um, well, I love all of it, obviously, but we are like, I don't need you. I don't need anyone to show up for me, but I can now choose and have a deeper discernment of who I want to hold me. And what's landing for me is that there's this this deep invitation for intimacy in a different way right? It's, I'm no longer going to like my partner or, you know, my sister or whoever, because like, well, that's their role. They're my partner. They're my sister, you know, and it's like this expectation or this unspoken um, pressure put on that, right? It's like no. through the course of being able to hold yourself. And I want you to speak more about like to you, what like, I want you to speak more into like, again, talk about another buzzword. What does it mean to hold yourself? Right. Like mm -hmm. a little bit more than that, but like through the course of that and creating mm -hmm. the intimacy with yourself to know yourself so deeply, to be in the curiosity, to excavate those parts that want to outsource to things and be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And in, in creating the internal intimacy, you are now out, like it's now emitting from you in every relationship. And now, as a result of that, you have a deeper discernment of like, well, this person might be able to hold me, but like, I'm literally opening my chest and giving you a piece of my heart. Do I want to do that with this person? You know, and it's, I think it's such a powerful thing. Yes, when we're walking with intention, but we're walking with this invitation of intimacy. And I feel like that's going to be a massive piece of how we're rewiring and how we interact and relate. Um, as a collective, as a whole, you know, it's like, yeah. it's this internal work that really is just laying the foundation and dropping the roots of how do we actually inter relate and just like create a new way of like being with one another. And it is an internal yeah. job. So I would love to hear like this, you know, ethereal term, holding yourself, holding yourself. What does that mean? Break it down for us. What does it mean? Yeah. <laughs> I told you this the other day. I'm going to share the same little story. There was, a, I had a conversation with my mom and my mom will probably watch this recording at some point. I'm going to send it to her. Oh. Hi, mom. <laughs> um, but we have had a really challenging relationship and we spoke on the phone the other day for the first time in about four years. And before that, the conversations have been very few and far between. And majority of the conversation, I was 
holding my, I mean, I was holding myself and it wasn't like an active practice to hold myself. I was present and I felt calm and relaxed. And I was also observing like, this is massive to be able to have this conversation and for us to be able to talk and connect again and not feel like triggered and on the edge of my seat, ready to guard and protect myself. Like to actually be in my body, grateful to be speaking to her, grateful to be connecting with her grateful for like the entire journey that we've had to get to this point and to be in the moment having the conversation with her and then there was one moment where she said something she was like recounting something that had happened and it triggered something in me and I felt this like little part of me or like this teenage kind of energy that it was like down kind of in my belly and I'll go into a little bit more about the embodiment side of things and how I've got to even identifying this within my body in a moment but it was like down in my belly and it felt like this little teenage uh voice energy like just like no like that's not how it happened and I it was like coming up and this happened in like a split second there's like this split second moment of it coming up and I it felt familiar it felt so familiar like this was the way that I reacted so many times in conversations with my mom and this was the thing that prevented us from having intimacy and connection prevented me from really being able to hear her to hear what she was sharing to hear what she was saying I feel emotional because I'm like envisioning her listening to this right now but it got in the way of our connection and holding myself was like I held myself in that moment and I acknowledged that part of me coming up and it was almost like it's like kind of came up to can't really see but it was like just over my belly button and then it like the sovereign mothering autonomous free part of myself I mean me it was like we've got all these parts of ourselves but really felt like like the me, me and my sovereign, autonomous, conscious, like, who am I? How do I want to show up in the world? Part of me came online and almost just like came in and held it and was like, I've got that. I don't need her to hold that. I don't need to project that out. Like, I've got that part of me. It's contained. It's held. It's not suppressed. It's not being avoided. It's not being shamed. It's held. And... It was, it was like a fire that just got gently not put out, but just like back down to a little amber and was like, yep, I've got that part of me and I am still here present in this conversation because that's what I'm doing right now. I'm having a conversation with my mom. We're reconnecting after a long time and I want to hear what she has to say. Regardless of my lens, regardless of my memory of what happened, I want to hear what she has to say. I want to hear her express I want to hold space for her to share what she's sharing right now and I'm actually really curious to hear her experience and her memory of this because huh interesting I remember it being different and does that mean that I'm right no because we both probably think we're right we both have a memory of what happened and I don't know whether that's just a story I've created in my mind or whether that's actually what happened so like simmer down <laughs> And I'll hold that and I'll come back to that. But right now I'm present showing up in this conversation. So that was like, that's a good practical example of holding myself and the journey to be able to like do that in the moment in something like that. It, it was like a split second that all of that happened was back to the point of recognizing like, oh, this 0.01% of the time I'm expecting someone else to hold me. Okay, I'm now going to devote my time, my attention, my energy into like the thing was for me was embodiment and moving my body. And I did this six week, um, it was called embodied alchemy, six week journey. That was one, two hour call a week. And the woman who was holding it would pull some cards, share around the energy, share around the playlist that she'd put together. And then literally just like guide us through a playlist. Our cameras would all be off. And it was the first time that I'd done anything like that. And I used to dance. So I had this like little bit of programming in me that was like not fully running the show, but it was still there of like, am I pointing my toes? How am I moving? Does it look graceful? Does it look elegant? And obviously the prompts and the style of music was like 
and yeah what the way that this woman held the container was like we're not that's not what we're here for like we're here to move our body in whatever way that our body wants to move and as I did that I, I it was just like I became aware of my body like a light switch went on and I was like oh like I'm there's memories like when I move a certain part of my hip or in a certain way like I start to remember something so I was drawing connections between like when I move this part of my body in this way this memory or this feeling or this trigger comes up and when I move in this way this comes up and it was just observing like oh wow this is really interesting and as I would continue to move I could it was like I was moving that out of my body like it wasn't stuck there anymore and I didn't the biggest realization was like I don't have to logically process every little trigger and trauma and memory and this and that and work out and analyze why did that happen and how did that shift the way that I show up in the world and how does that like like when I got a break from that, I'm like holy fuck my head is able to actually rest like my body can do this work my body is actually incredibly capable if not a whole lot more fucking capable than what's going on up here and I can give my mind a rest and I can also use my mind as a tool and again that's like the ownership and the empowerment and choosing like who do I allow in my space who do I allow the whole space for me and also like how do I work with my mind how do I allow my mind to serve me and where do I create some boundaries within myself of like no, that's like, that's my body's job. Like my body's actually really good at doing that. My mind is really good at doing this. My psyche, which feels like a whole other thing than my mind is like really good at this. And bringing all of that together into harmony. Again, back to the freedom living thing. Like to me, that's what freedom feels like in my body. When all of that, it's like when all the parts of me are in their right place. And therefore, as a result of that externally, things fall into place. It's like they're in their right place and the relationships and the way that the dynamic with the relationships are feel appropriate and the boundaries feel appropriate, but it starts inside. Like you said, it's an inside job. Like that's where it starts. And that's what feels really liberating as well is like rather than trying to change or manifest whatever the external situation, like I'm literally just going to focus my attention on internally what's going on and also accepting the reality not like kidding myself into what I want to go on what I want to happen like starting the starting point of this is actually what's happening right now I can't I can't change anything if I'm not starting there I gotta start with like what is actually going on which were the relationships the friendships witnessing each other like having these kind of conversations with each other and then also reflecting back to each other like well, yeah, that's where I see you do that. Or I have felt and noticed you show up in this way. And it it's like God's these little breadcrumbs and external perspectives and reflections to help put the puzzle together so that we can do the inside. Yeah, 9%. Mm-hmm. I, the, um, the example that you gave, the real-time example with you and your mom, mm-hmm. I feel like it's a really great real time example too of how, you know, they say that before we begin our own personal healing journey, it's literally like our wounded five year old who's running the show, right? Because it's like, that's, that's the reaction. And that's the stories that we're viewing our world from, you know, even as as an adult, as an adult, we're not actually running the show. It's that little five year old, right? That's, it's still looking from this hurtful wounded place. And hearing you tell that story, it's like, I could almost see, um, this new, no, I don't want to say new, this responsible adult, someone who has taken responsibility of their own journey and their own pain and their own delight and ecstasy, like wrapping her arms around that little five-year-old being like, I got it, baby. We're all good here, you know. Let's let's just hear what she has to say, you know. And I think it's such a beautiful, like, real time example of what that process looks like exactly. Um, 
and how it changes your, like instantaneously changes your ability to receive, to go from like triggered, like, wait a second, no, I need to, I need to tell her, you know, but rather like, huh, maybe. Let's hear yeah. what she has to say. You know what I mean? And as a result of just that, what seems like, you know, a minor shift has exponential value in terms of how it is actually going to, again, bring intimacy and change how you relate together. Right. Um, which is just, I love that example so much um, because I think we can all relate to it. I think the mother wound, the sister wounds specifically as women is something that we all carry from the beginning. Um, I want to say on that too, just add a little context. I realized as you were saying that the reason that I could even do that in that moment is because I trust myself to hold that part of me. Like I've actually, I've actually done it. I'm actually in integrity with myself. And I know like that part of me that comes up that wants to have a voice and needs to have a voice as well. Like it, when I, when I just did that little momentary, like so hard to put into words, but it's just this like embodied holding myself. The reason it feels like, well, the reason now, because this didn't used to happen. And this is the thing, like the reason that part of me didn't keep like knocking and like trying to break out of the hug, let's say of like, no, like I want a fucking voice, listen to me. The reason that that didn't happen is because I trust myself to hold that part of me. And even as I'm saying this out loud, like I didn't get off the conversation and then sit with that part of me and be like, okay, what is it? What's coming up? I didn't even really need to do that. And there have been plenty of times where I have done that. But it was always like, that's all I needed. I just, that part of me just needed to know, like there's some boundaries here. <laughs> like yeah. this is the way that we're showing up in this conversation. and the way that I held that part of me was like the frequency is everything. And like, this is what you have brought to my life, Bernadette. Like I hadn't thought about frequency ever until really like the, when we held the feel the frequency gene keys container at the start of the year. And we were in the desert together, Bernadette and I went camping in like April, I think this year. And we both had this day where we like went off in our own direction and I was under this tree and just like this beautiful little oasis in the desert and Bernadette went out onto a lizard rock and just like gorged herself in the sun and she came back and she was like feel the frequency feel the frequency she's like I don't know I just keep this like phrase is just like we got to feel the frequency so then we held this it was like a three or four week jinkies container where we felt the frequency of our jinkies and if you don't know what the jinkies are it's a similar thing to astrology kind of you get a profile based on your birth time location date and there's all these words and numbers and there's a book and you can read all sorts of things about those words and numbers and there's audio clips and there's heaps of information and it's groundbreaking incredible stuff and it's frequency and so we like spent this, like the journey of this container together feeling like, okay, yes, like we understand through reading a book and whatever, what devotion means, but what does that frequency feel like in my body? So by that's like, that's been a big part of, for me, like actually really being able to embody this is really tricky to put into words, but like to feel really embodied in who I am and have a reference point of the energetics of who I am, which tools like astrology and the gene keys and human design and whatever else, like they, those tools are great for getting some clarity and ideas and reference points around like who we are and who we're here to be and what our unique energetic signature is. And it's an external thing reflecting back to us what's already internal. So it feels like there's a, there's like a logical, I'm just like trying to describe the process of what goes on. For me, there's like this logical understanding of like, okay, 
I can get down with that. That feels resonant. The Gene Keys have stuck. Devotion, rapture, exquisiteness, like all these, you know, the city is great. That does, okay, yeah, that feels like it represents me. The shadows of half-heartedness and desire and mediocrity, like, yes, that feels resonant as well. Okay, so those are some reference points. How does that feel in my body? And then when I'm doing the inside job of holding myself and bringing the energy of like holding that teenager within me or holding the little girl within me, there's now a frequency of acceptance and love and devotion and rapture and lightness and exquisiteness and style and like all of the things that are me and innately me, I'm bringing that authentic expression internally to myself and holding myself in a way that feels integrous and authentic and it feels like that is the thing that allows that triggered part of me to feel safe more than anything like I did I need to go and self-soothe and like have a conversation with myself and journal for half an hour after no I didn't and I'm like, I'm realizing verbally processing now I think the reason why I didn't need to do that was because the way I held myself was true and authentic to me so I felt safe within myself and I could get on with my day which is something that Bernadette and I talk about a lot like I don't want to live my life continually processing and analyzing these parts of me I don't want to live that way I I want to go for a walk and go fishing and spend time with my family and work on things that I enjoy and show up with my friends and go out for lunch. Like I want to, I want to spend my time doing those things. If I'm really honest with myself, like that's what I want to do. I want to go for a walk and feel the grass on my feet. I want to go down and spend a couple of hours by the lake and have a coffee and like feed the horses and just be here and present in my life. And if I'm always continually in this process of like, why did I show up like that? Where does this part of me come from? Da, 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 da. And like processing things all the time. Oh my God, it's exhausting. I've done that. I don't want to live that way. And that's also just, it's, yeah, it's a valid season and stage. And I moved through that and I have moved through it. And I don't want to continue to live in that space because I want to live in my life. Like I want to be here with what's here in this moment and present with it and learning from it and engaging with it and experiencing it. And we kind of roll our eyes sometimes. We're like, <laughs> oh, God. Like, just, oh, come on, are we always in a process? Like, we don't have to always be in a process. Like, let's, and it's not to invalidate, I don't no. know. Do you have something to say on this? I do. I feel like I'm because... choose my words. <laughs> I just want to bring this back to kind of the journey that you've led us on in this conversation, because, like, this is a great piece of it, is like, okay, so... The key, the key points that have kind of been your journey is embodiment. Great. So going inward, doing the inside job stuff. Okay, cool. Connecting, getting really clear of what's being communicated internally. Great. Then there is this acceptance and ownership piece, right? That comes online. Do I accept what is, what, what is in my life? Do I take ownership of my part in it? Do I... Am I giving myself the space to recognize how I'm participating in patterns that maybe I'm like actually have the awareness now to be like, oh, I don't want to do it like that anymore. Or I'm not, or I love that. Let's keep doing that. Right. Um, and then that leads in like to this responsibility piece. Now it's my responsibility through acceptance and ownership. It's now my responsibility to act on it take action in what way or am i just going to continue down this cycle which what you said then leads to trusting yourself and that either goes you, you mentioned like you've learned when the body gets it or the mind gets it right and so i think this point is like there are times for the mind to process and go through the process of it. And then there are times to be like, I'm going to go for a walk and stick my feet on the grass and feel and be open to whatever wants to come in, but not forcing or being in any kind of, I don't know, um, need to have an answer kind of energy, which kind of leads back into this embodiment piece. So it's this really interesting arc that you've kind of outlined in terms of like what your 
journey is with it all. And I think, I think that's a big permission slip for people because I do think, and I know we talk about this a lot in terms of like enough, like, yes, with the process, but like there's other ways to process. And sometimes it is just a matter of like, babe, you're hungry. Go get a good night's sleep. Go drink some water. Like it can be that simple. (laughs) It doesn't have to be like, oh my gosh, and I have to journal for three hours and pull cards. It's like, know where that that where the balance needs to be and like again bring in the delight and the play and the joy and like just a little bit of like ease for yourself you know (laughs) a lot can be accomplished with going to take a walk in the grass or laying on the grass and just looking up you know it's just like so i think that's really i love that like this massive permission slip to like maybe consider a new way to process or maybe it's not even a process maybe it's just i'm just allowing myself to be I, that's it like i was just saying that i'm like in, I, I really just <laughs> i'm realizing like in a lot of ways i've let go of the idea of even processing things because i trust life is going to continue to present opportunities to integrate and process on the go like let's keep it moving exactly <laughs> With, like just keep living showing up being present in this moment in this moment in this moment and i trust myself more and more as the weeks go on to discern what i need who i need in my space who i don't and like that changes day to day, week to week, hour to hour. Like I trust myself in um, the next, the moment that I'm going to need to know what I need, I'll know then. What do I need now? Like, where do I need to be now? And the, the other morning I woke up in a proper funk. I had some, I've been dreaming so much lately. And I woke up after like just some really bizarre heavy dreams and I hadn't really put two and two together but I woke up like getting ready I felt like heavy and just like grumpy and unmotivated and and then I like I was like what's going on like there was just this awareness of like I don't actually I don't actually want to go through the rest of my day feeling like this and I also have things to do and so if I'm gonna get the shit done that I need to get done today like this energy is not going to help that. Like I, I can foresee where this is going to go. And if I stay in this energy all day, it's going to be really hard to get the stuff that I need to get done done. And then I remembered, I was like, oh, the dreams. Oh God. Yeah. No wonder I feel heavy. <laughs> and then I was just like, fuck this. Like I just put on music and I was making my coffee. The kettle was boiling and I started to like dance and jump and shake my feet and shake my hands. And literally within the space of like 30 seconds, the kettle had boiled poured my coffee and I was good I was good to go and I was like cool move on like move on with the day and I reckon like I took note and I was like that's so funny like I could have in just like 30 seconds of some good music and some movement like I've literally changed the entire course of my day and how I get to experience my day and I don't want to experience my entire day grumpy And sometimes it feels good to stay in a bit of a slump and be a bit demotivated and lay in bed and eat food. And like, I do that as well. Like there are moments for that. The other day was not a day for that. Like I had things to do and I made an autonomous decision of like, I want to shift my energy and I want to get on with my day. And it literally took 30 seconds and it wasn't that hard, but it felt like this pattern, like I pattern interrupt and like I consciously changed the pattern and I think why I was even aware of it and celebrated it, because I did, I was like, good on me. Like, I fucking did that. It was because it is so comfortable to stay in that grump. Like, that's a pretty ingrained pattern when I'm in that particular frequency of that energy. It's like almost this addictive, like, I want to stay there and then continue to look for all the reasons that validate why I'm grumpy. Sure. So I can like analyze and point at them and work out how to change them. And I was just like, fuck that. Like I'm just, I'm making a coffee. I'm going through a walk. I'm putting on some music, shake this up, feel better. Great. Move on. Yeah. Didn't think about it for the rest of the day. Yeah. But I mean, it's just another good example of like 
taking assessment of like, does this actually need my attention and time? And if so, what does that need to look like? Right. And it's also like taking ownership of your day, taking, you know, accepting like, this is where I'm at right now. Is this actually where I need to be? Right. Yeah. So like this, there's this constant like assessment happening. Right. And that is always rooted in you have done this cycle so many times that you have developed an innate level of trust in yourself that just is unquestionable, right? So it's like, I trust that I'll know if I need to lay here and wallow, then fine. And I trust that like, that doesn't feel resonant right now for me. And it will, to your point before, if at some, if this continues to be present in my day, well then, then I know I need to like go home and like carve out some space for it and sit with it. In a exactly. Day, right. But yeah. that's, you know, it's just, it's that constant check-in, that constant tuning in and being an active participant in your own life rather than just being walking on autopilot. Yep. Yeah. It's a big one. Which on. <laughs> wake up yeah, let's up. do this thing it's actually a lot of fun and that's the other thing like they have a sure. fucking great time and it took 30 seconds and I probably was also a bit surprised like oh huh, that's all it was like it was a 30 second job and you're right because it could have continued and if it did then I totally I would have stayed inside and pulled some cards and journal like I would have there's a time and a place there's a time yeah. and a place but it was like, what, it was a thing that... need in this moment yeah and like try some stuff Totally. like I don't always know that's the other thing I don't think we do really know until we've tried some stuff and then we're like ah that worked okay great now I'm a little bit more familiar with the frequency of that feeling and like matching up feels like those I don't know some game where you like you match things up and you (laughs) you make the connections of like the frequency and oh that frequency of feeling a little bit heavy and like I had some shitty dreams and then I put on some music and I danced for 30 seconds, literally just while the kettle was boiling and I was good. It, now there's like this synaptic connection in my brain. Exactly. That next time that, and that's why the frequency is like, I'm on one about like, it's everything for me. Like it's, it's everything to be able to identify that frequency. Mm-hmm. I don't need to psychoanalyze it and spend half my day trying to work out why I feel like that. I can yeah. feel it. I can feel the like in my body embodied remembering of what supported me last time I felt that frequency and obviously it's trial and error but like next time that frequency comes up it's a little more ingrained and a little more ingrained and a little more ingrained and I refine it and refine it and sometimes it'll be like okay that was that a little bit but there's also this frequency and that's new so what do I do with that and like how do I process that and move through that and I get, like you said, like, what, what do I need? What is actually needed for what's being presented? Yeah. I just want to circle, like you basically just described very well, like you had mentioned before, like, what are these terms? What are these buzzwords like pattern interrupt? Right. And you just, you just described it very beautifully where it's like, you feel a particular feeling or emotion after a night of crazy dreams. And you're just like, meh. And you have a pattern in which you would normally operate, which is like, well, clearly today is not the day. So I'm going to stay here and just be in it. Right. But the pattern interrupt is like, well, let me try something else. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, it interrupts it so that you can start creating these other synaptic um, associations and feelings. And, you know, we, we use the phrasing, like it's a weaker muscle, right? The stronger muscle is to stay there and to wallow because it's like, that's been the pattern. When you interrupt it, then you begin to start like building other muscles and training other muscles to where it just becomes second nature then at that point and creates beautiful other relationships for um, tools and um, yeah, resources. Yeah, an experience of life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a more pleasant experience for me like I enjoy it's not easy right like I just I it's really not easy. To too. it's like it's, it's all not fun easy. and well here to be like oh just throw in a kettle and dance but it's like <laughs> that's the last thing you want to do like let's present that piece that just wants to stay under the covers and be like fuck this day you know what I mean yeah, like, that's real doing yeah. 
doing something different is hard. Hence yeah. it being a pattern interrupt. Hence it being a muscle that is being trained for the first time. It's going to be yeah. sore. It's going to feel weak. It's not going to feel great all the time. Yeah. And you know how it is after you work out, you're like, Ooh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, glad yeah. I did that. <laughs> I'm glad I did that. It felt good. Like there was some resistance and challenge oh. and I did it and I moved through it. Yeah. yeah. I think you're right, Emily. Totally. I love movement. I, we're chatting with Emily in the next call and she has been hosting some embodiment calls. Oh. One, well, she's called it the ripple effect, which is, I love that. Yeah. Brilliant name, DJ. And I want to quiz her a little bit more around the movement the music and facilitating and holding those spaces as well. Cause it feels like that's a big, just a, like the embodiment thing. It's a big part of the freedom theme. Yeah. I mean, I think we've all seen that phrase, right? It's like in, I haven't fact checked this, so I just want to preference that, but we've seen that, like that meme or that thing where it's like in, you know, um, indigenous cultures, when people are feeling depressed or this and that, they go to their medicine person and the medicine person's like, when's the last time you dance? When's the last time that you sing? And so yes it is something that inherently for some reason as we get older it there's becomes this block to use our bodies I'm not sure what the deal is there mm -hmm. um but it's a nice reminder over and over that we it's such a massive tool that we have right here right now always um and these beautiful bodies that move us through our day without even thinking about it at times, you know, that really do have a lot of medicine for us, um, just yeah. to get us out of these slumps and yeah, to help navigate new ways of being. So mm -hmm. I want to be mindful of time. Yeah. I just want to see, is there anything that you wanted to touch on that we didn't, or is there anything that's like fiery present right now for you? That's just like, Ooh, this needs to be said. No, you feel complete. No. I feel complete. complete. Thanks for the chat. Yeah, thanks for chatting with me. <laughs> there will definitely be a replay, Sophia. <laughs> I was so happy to see your name pop up. I was like, ah. Aw. 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 Cool. Okay. You want to touch this base is... just a little bit about the rest of the yeah. week? Yeah. So we've got some time zone changes. For those of us on the live call, daylight savings is happening. It's a thing. All of the calls are linked in, well, the, so the same Zoom link that we're using now is it's going to be the same Zoom uh, link for all of the calls. And I've done a little graphic on the event so you can see when all the times are in your time zone. And aside from that, replays. So we've got the replays to watch. The next call, like I said, is with Emily and we're going to chat about her journey and whatever's present right now, but the kind of the cornerstones, I guess, that I'll be asking you about, Emily, is your, like the big one is Emily's journey with sobriety and again, like taking ownership for her experience and what came up in the gap when she went sober, like what she was experiencing and how she moved through that and held herself through that. And also the DJ music embodiment piece, massive, and coming back around to that as well, um, full circle moment and motherhood and the way, I mean, just the little, the little snippets of what Emily shared with me around how she interacts with her boys is like to I I want to know more. I'm curious to know more. So I'm really looking forward to chatting about that and how Emily navigates the motherhood and like caring for herself as a woman and not abandoning herself as a woman just because she's a mother. And it doesn't even feel like it's two things. It's it's one thing. It's actually all together. And the way that Emily holds that is also something that I am looking forward to chatting to her more about. So that's going to be the next call. And what else? I'll send emails with any like integration materials and it comes up. So I'm using a site that Bernadette put me onto called Luma. It's brilliant. I love it. It's free. It's a great 
platform to host offerings like this. If any of you want to do something along these lines as well, and you can set it up to be free or paid and connect it with your Stripe account. I love Luma. So you can send out a blast and we'll all, everyone who signed up will receive that in their email inbox. And it'll also be on the bottom of the event page. So anyone who watches the recordings at a later date, you'll be able to go to the bottom of the website and see the integration materials. Because if you sign up, for example, after I send out the blast, you won't get it in your email inbox, but you will be able to see it at the bottom of that page. So it'll all be there. And feel free to reach out if anything, if you want to share anything along the way. Um, I haven't made like a group space for this yet. You might need to do that. But feel free to reach out to me personally or Bernadette and just connect and share any feedback or questions or things that you would like like to hear spoken into. Actually, that would be really supportive for the next few calls. If there's anything in particular that you'd like to hear a little bit more around, let me know. We can bring that into the conversation. All right, I have a question. That's it. Go Last on. question. Are you ready? Last question. <laughs> okay. The freedom frequency in your body, how you feel it, how you experience, how you live it, how it breathes, how it moves. If it were embodied into an animal, what animal would it be? I love that. <laughs> a lion. A, a lion. lion. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because it's like that's the first thing that came up without even thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. because uh I just God, I haven't thought about lions for a while. There's been a whole heap of other animals in my presence. Lions are like one of the dangerous creatures that aren't in Australia. But they're <laughs> I love that lions are like the first sense I get is this like quiet, slow, heavy, lazy, lying in the sun, like just soaking up the sun. And like not needing to be anywhere or do anything. And they're on the earth. They're like lying they're down, themselves. connected. Sorry. <laughs> they're holding themselves. They're holding themselves. And that's it. Like they're soaking it up. But if shit goes down, like don't fuck with a lion. Like just, <laughs> just don't. Because they might be chill and resting and on the earth and soaking up the sun. But like. They also know what's going on. They're embodied. They they feel it. They can tell. All right. The lion. Answer That's a great question it. to close. Yeah, it just came to me. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> All right, darling. Well, thank you for the convo. I love thank you. you. I love you. Thanks for holding this with me and supporting yeah. us as well this week. Mm -hmm. All right, all. Thanks for being here as well. And like Bernadette said, like we can come up with these ideas and offerings and spaces, but until, until you, like those of you who are here showing up, until you breathe life into it and show up, it doesn't happen. It wouldn't exist. Like we wouldn't be here if it weren't for... Talking to each other. <laughs> Sorry? We'd be talking to we each other. We probably still would have done it. I still would have wanted to record them and have them, but it's a very different dynamic when it's like that. So I really appreciate all of you mm -hmm. um, just showing up and being here and also like supporting us and encouraging us to continue to have these conversations spaces. Every time, every time I hold something like this and there's any, you know, there's a form of response of like, yeah, okay, I want to be involved in this. I'm, I want to receive this, whether it's live or in the recording, whatever it is, it fans my flame of like, okay, like keep showing up, keep creating these spaces, keep having these conversations because it's needed and it's landing and it's important to have these conversations. But without that, without the two-way dynamic, it's like, okay, well, maybe this isn't the thing. And then sometimes that's it too. It's like, well, this isn't the thing. Let's shift it and change it and mold it and continue to listen and be in devotion to it. And then when it lands, it lands. And it feels like, okay, this is what we're here to do. This is what we need to be doing. And we can trust ourselves to know what the next thing is to do tomorrow. But for today, this is it. And it's been great. And I really appreciate you all being here. Thank you so much. And thanks, Bernadette, for inviting me in to share a little bit as well before we have the rest of the conversations Important. didn't even think about it I was like oh yeah of course if I'm gonna ask others to step into that space I should probably 
not should, but yeah, that's aligned for me to show up in this way as well. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Oh, let's close this out. Feel free to pop anything in the chat or take yourself off mute and just share a little whatever. Whatever wants to come out. Doesn't need to be anything. Oh, I love you all so <laughs> much. Ah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thanks for joining. See you all in the next one. Thanks for witnessing me. Hmm. Love you all. Hmm.